It's time for Losses Above Replacement, the best baseball podcast to grace your ears, with your hosts, Alex. Gosh, I have so many questions. Also, where's my car? Splash. I strive to love something as much as my grandmother loves buying new crockpots. And Mac. If, if you've ever been to Boston, you know that they have amazing ice cream. Coming to you from coast to coast, it's L-A-R. Go for it, Mac. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone, to Losses Above Replacement. As the intro said, the greatest baseball podcast to grace your ears. I'm today's host, Matthias Altman Kurosaki, and with me, as always, we have Alex Clark and Ryan Splashpots. Gentlemen, first things first, as we begin every show, how are we doing on this fine Wednesday evening? We're doing good over here, I would say. Uh, it, I'm a little worried about the weather here, and because I'm worried about the weather, the most logical thing uh, to do is to be in a golf tournament this weekend when it has a 75% chance of rain. So, you know, I am making only the smartest of decisions over here. Uh, other than that, though, doing pretty good. I've been given time to hang out with some friends, play some games, yeah, and it's been a very, very fun time. Uh, so I'm continuing my run of not listening to sports podcasts because I don't want to, like, curse the Ravens or curse the Braves. I, I guess I already cursed the Braves enough. Um, so I've been listening to a podcast on the French Revolution, and it's amazing to me how many people can lose their head despite not changing their position. They have the same position, but the rest of the country moves so far the other way that they become the outlier. They become the hyper-conservative or the ultra-radical. Uh, so fun times were had by all. Yeah, so I'll say I had a pretty good weekend uh, despite the Mets losing. Obviously, I'm sure everyone knows by now. Uh I, I wish they were playing in the World Series, but honestly, they had a great season. I'm not gonna lose. I'm not losing too much sleep over that. Um, mm-hmm. The Steelers won, as I'm sure everyone else knows. Uh, that happened to be the same night the Mets got eliminated. So, uh, apologies to any of my fellow Mets fans who are, happen to be Jets fans, because that was a rough, rough night for you guys. Uh, and especially knowing that the Knicks got blown out last night. It uh, hasn't been the greatest days for the New York sports other than the Yankees making the World Series. And actually, shout out to the New York Liberty. They won the WNBA championship. So mm-hmm. shout out to the, to, to them. Uh, other than that, I went to homecoming for my alma mater, TCNJ. I uh, had the alumni meet, got to see some of my old friends, got to hang out at the football game. Um, so yeah, that, that was fun. And, uh, I am going on a road trip next week with my parents going down to Atlanta. So, uh, it'll be just these two guys with you, uh, next week for the second time in three weeks. Everyone knows the so, train wreck that that was last time, but <laughs> exactly. It wasn't that uh, bad. No, I'm joking. It was, we, that was honestly probably one of the best just you and I recording sessions we've ever had. I yeah, legitimately so, had a good time yeah. with it. Yes. Well, I so, hope you yeah, have a yeah, good time. We're talking too. baseball. Yeah. Exactly. Let's talk in yeah, so, baseball. I was listening to that song earlier today. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'll be down in Atlanta for a few days. Uh, my parents' anniversary is next week, so uh, sort of celebrating that. Um, it happens to be on Halloween, of course. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what uh, is happening in my world. Uh, but anyway, as I mentioned earlier, the World Series, uh, the teams have been set. It begins on Friday, so by the time this comes out, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, the Yankees coming out of the American League after beating the Guardians in five games. The Dodgers coming out of the National League. They're beating the Mets in six games. So we're going to do a deep dive on both these teams and then give our final predictions for the World Series. And Similar to what we did in the regular season, we're going to talk about why each team will win the World Series and also why they won't win the World Series. So I say we go ahead. Let's get started in the American League with the Yankees. They were both teams, by the way, were the one seed in their respective leagues. So the Yankees, ninety four and sixty eight, like I said earlier, they beat beat, beat the Guardians, in the ALCS, beat the Royals in the ALDS. Didn't face a ton of resistance, I feel like, in either series. So let's start with why they will win the World Series. So tell me, you two, tell me why the Yankees will win the World Series. Uh, let's go to the splash first here. Why will the Yankees win the World Series? It's because of the man, the myth, the legend, Big G, John Carlos Stanton. We are watching a player cement his Hall of Fame candidacy as we speak. ALCS MVP, 
has eight career playoff home runs against Cleveland, which is insane. And all, all of his hits have been home runs um, dating back to previous series. And he comes up down to with a man on and you're like, he's going to do something. He's going to do something right here. So, but my, my overall point here is with Stanton, with judge, with Soto, I think the Yankees are the one team that can out star power the Dodgers, especially with the hobbled Freddie Freeman and judge hasn't quite gotten going, but he's still an immense power threat. Soto is as tough of an at bat as you will find in baseball. Like any era, Juan Soto is that dude in the box and John Carlos Stanton is a menace in the playoffs and you don't want to leave a pitch in the strike zone. Mr. Tanner Bybee. Um, we can talk about the depth at a later date, but I think the star power leans Yankees here. And that's a big reason why I think they can win the world series. Yeah. I, I, I'm with you on that to a, to a strong degree, but like, I don't know. I still will always have my questions about Giancarlo. Uh, my answer for this, I'm actually going to play along a little, just do a little bit of a uh, wordplay here. And the Yankees are going to win the world series because you can't dodge when you all rise. At this point now, the Dodgers, I think overall, like, yes, they are strong, really good, strong team. But look at look at what the Yankees are doing. I think this is the series where Aaron Judge really rips it apart. You know, like we have never we've not gotten to see him in a World Series. Again, we also haven't gotten to see Giancarlo, I believe. Here. Correct. Yeah. And so that we have, and he absolutely killed it. So I want to see what happens when you do put him in the World Series. Do you have the stat lines that he has over the course of his playoff career? Or do you have what people expect out of out of Judge? And I'm not saying that he's been horrible in the playoffs. He's just not been Aaron Judge level. That, and there's a very clear difference between the two of them. But I legitimately think at this point, this is going to be the series that Aaron Judge cements not only the fact that he is going to be a Hall of Fame level threat for the rest of his career, but he is going to be someone that New York's going to want to build a statue of someday because he's going to get them their first playoff win since 2009. Yeah, well, when thinking of this prompt, my first thought went to what Splash said about Stanton. I think Stanton is a menace. Especially when he's on, when he's hitting, it feels like every swing he takes, the ball goes over the fence. It's crazy that in the ALCS he only had four hits, but they're all homers. He has only eight hits in his career against Cleveland in the playoffs. They're all homers. Uh, yeah, half of half of his sixteen career playoff homer runs are against Cleveland. Uh, if you wouldn't believe it, uh, you know this is a guy who didn't make the postseason for the first you know seven years of his career with Miami. Uh, and he's made the playoffs all but one year with the Yankees, and he's made the most of it. I mean, it just feels like every time he's in the playoffs, he does something crazy. But mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about the one star we haven't really brought up, Juan Soto. The Yanks are going to win the World Series because that guy is cool as a cucumber. That man, mm -hmm. I mean, that at-bat against Hunter Gaddis is, might be one of the yeah. best at-bats I've ever seen. That man, yeah. he was in a two-strike count, just keeps fouling pitches off, fouling pitches off. And as the at-bat goes on, you're like, Man, he's definitely about to go deep, and he gets a high fastball and just crushes it. I mean, I can't say I, I I can't say enough good things about Juan Soto, and I think this is going to be you know this is going to be the series, win or lose, he's going to earn himself so much money from this series, and he already earned himself plenty of money all season. You know, the six years before that, the the, the ALDS. I mean, he's just been incredible. Uh, this I think has been the best se best full season of his career. Uh, so yeah. if the Yankees are going to win the World Series, I think S Soto is going to be in the middle of basically everything. It's so weird to me at the very that the that when we talk about players that have like you know been there before, the veterans that have been around the game long enough. When you take a look at Stan Judge and Soto, the guy that has been in the spotlight the longest here in this kind of an idea, or at least in the playoffs slash World Series, it's the youngest one in Juan Soto. He's and still 19. He yeah, okay. apparently he's, he's still 14 years old. Yeah, he turns uh, 26 on uh, Friday, actually. Yeah. The dude's already Which won a crazy. World Series. Yeah, and... It's funny to think about that when you take a look at all of the power guys that we're talking about from this, even most of the people from the Dodgers here, the number one 
the only one who's actually won a World Series in all this is Soto. And take a look at the end of the. I said of the most of the names, Splash. Of most. Okay. Of the okay. I, I listen. Mookie Betts robbed my team, my beloved Braves, of the <laughs> World Series. So yeah. I, I said most, not all, okay. because okay. especially of that. But we'll re- and respect Dodgers Will Smith, even if though he's having a crappy postseason. Yeah, but regardless, yeah, like that's kind of it. Like I didn't want to make I want to make sure I didn't brush over Soto, uh, because what he is doing and what he's going to continue to do in this, if it's anything like what we saw in that series when he was with the Nationals here against the Astros, we're gonna see something special. Yeah, I mean, I I think you know it's crazy because he played in his first World Series uh, when he was twenty or about to turn twenty one, I believe. You know, mm-hmm. you think of what most twenty or twenty one year olds are doing around that time of year. You're probably getting ready for midterms or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but nope, Juan Soto, you're terrorizing the Astros in the World Series. Uh, which, <laughs> I mean, judging by how he performed that postseason against you know Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander, I. I mean, I see no reason why he won't go bananas in this World Series. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, so, that bullpen game, Dodgers bullpen game, oh boy, that hit. That was yeah. that was such a gutsy call. And, Man. Uh, yeah. Flaherty, comma, Jack starting game one is certainly a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So let's, let's move on to the Dodgers then uh, and talk about why they will win the World Series, Alex. So go to you first here. Why will the Dodgers win the World Series? The Dodgers are going to win the World Series because they are the more complete team. Now, do I think that they are the most complete team team in baseball? No. I think that of the two teams in the World Series right now, they are the one that I trust one through nine so much more as well as their pitching staff. I'm not saying the Yankees don't have great good pitching at all. They definitely have some good arms. But... Even with the starter injuries that we have seen from the Dodgers all season, they still have a decent pitching staff, and one through nine of their lineup I worry about. Whereas after you get past um, Soto, Stanton, and Judge, you start to get a few question marks here. Whereas the Dodgers, when you have a just... Just for five, by the way, just for five of Otani, Mookie, Freddie Freeman, here, excuse me, uh, Will Smith, uh, all these guys as well. You have that, that's already more, and you keep going down, and it doesn't get much worse. Like, they have one of the best looking offenses here that we've seen in a while. It is a true high caliber team, and it's going to be. The fact that they are more complete, usually more complete teams will win in a World Series scenario because you can't just get by on one aspect alone. That's how teams have gotten to the World Series is by going through that exact path here and make sure they demolish the teams that have those weaknesses. The Yankees do have those weaknesses, and I think the Dodgers are going to expose it. I think this is a case of um, but the Yankees have the star power. They have the... Uh, we talked about it last week that if you like drop this lineup in 2009 and you just compare it to other teams, I think, yeah, this is a reasonable approximation of a World Series team. If you drop the 2023 Diamondbacks, I don't know about it. Um, but the, as you said, the, the Dodgers just the depth. And I think that's why will the Dodgers win the World Series? The one through nine lineup breaks. You have Will Smith, you have Freddie, you have Teoscar, you have Mookie, you have Otani, and then you have. NLCS MVP, Tommy Edmond. Then you have playoff hero, Kike Hernandez. Max Muncy can hit bombs. And you just have so much in the way of just every at bat is going to be a pain. We saw in the Mets series, it's walk after walk after walk after walk. Then you get a, a bomb, right? And this is no disrespect to Glaber Torres and Jess Chisholm and Anthony Rizzo and Austin Wells and the Yankees have really good players in their own right. They have really good like secondary and tertiary mm-hmm. pieces. But I would take a Teoscar Hernandez over that group. I would take a Will Smith over that group. I would take, you know, playoff Kike Hernandez over that group, who is going to end up with like twenty career playoff home runs inexplicably. <laughs> um, so. You know the number he's at right now due to last week's trivia. <laughs> I think he hit another one. He did hit another, yeah. But... He did, yes. 
And Stanton would have been an answer, a correct answer now, but it was not <laughs> a correct answer when you posed the question. But yeah, this is this is a Dodgers thing. Uh, we talk all year that they're an all-star team, this, an all-star team, that, and they have all the superstars. You have all the MVPs. You have what, four MVPs um, if, if Kershaw's alive. I hope he is. Um, but just the depth is magnificent. Yeah, I'm going to just pile on here. Dodgers are winning the World Series because that lineup is relentless. Uh, having watched it this week, uh, I'll fully admit – I have been wrong to pick against the Dodgers this whole postseason. I picked against them in the San Diego series. I was wrong. I picked against them in the NLCS. I was wrong again. Uh, I There are literally no holes in this lineup. Uh, and we talk about Freddie Freeman. Is Freddie Freeman going to be healthy? Well, the games where they haven't played Freddie Freeman, they scored eight runs in game four of the NLDS. They scored 10 runs in game four of the NLCS, and they scored another 10 runs in game six of the NLCS. So whether or not Freddie Freeman is playing, this lineup is a juggernaut. I mean, who would have guessed Tommy Edmond in the cleanup spot? Tommy Edmond was in the regular season, arguably their worst hitter. Tommy Edmond in the playoffs can back clean up and win NLCS MVP. He drove in 11 runs in the six games. I literally have no clue how you get this guy out. I mean, clearly... He's rekindled whatever magic, the devil magic they have in St. Louis because <laughs> he's he was literally unstoppable. Uh, and, he, I mean, Shohei Otani is obviously going to win MVP again. But, you know, there were, at, there were at-bats where the Mets straight up just opted not to pitch to him, just threw him four pitches, not even close. Then Mookie Betts comes up and drives him in. Like, you know, you, you can't pitch around guys because the guy behind them is going to do damage. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez was cold most of the NLCS, but you started seeing it in game six that he's still really dangerous. He had a great mm-hmm. NLDS. So I, he's a postseason he looks, threat, man. Oh, yeah. He's he's a beast in the regular season. He's a beast in the postseason. Kike Hernandez is all right in the regular season. And then, like, I, I don't know if Barry Bonds is the right batter to compare him to, but he's, like, unstoppable in the postseason. I don't know what, what it is. The lights turn on. He's <laughs> – you know, home run, home run, home run. Yeah, it's it's insane. So I think they have the best one and nine in baseball. I think it's fair to say that. And I mean, you, I think the Yankees have a solid lineup too. I think they maybe have the you know two two of the three best hitters in baseball right now in Judge and Soto. But I mean, that, that Dodgers lineup. I don't know how anyone can get them out. It doesn't matter who's pitching; they're going to do damage. Uh, by the way, they just set the record for most runs in a playoff series, and they only played six six of the seven games. So, really makes you think. And but and their their wins have been convincing. Uh, mm-hmm. They had a stretch where they threw four shutouts in five games. So, yeah, the Dodgers are really good. That's the point. Uh, they are <laughs> extreme. What a hot take good. there! The Dodgers are really good. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> came in with a uh, put put me on flaming hot takes. You know that's. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so that, yeah, the Dodgers, obviously they, they were, they are the betting favorites coming into this. Uh, so let's move on to why these teams will not win the world series, starting with the Yankees. And I'll go first here. The Yankees will not win the world series because you have to get 27 outs in the game. Uh, unfortunately it, it's weird for me to say this because I really thought the Yankees had a great pitching staff and I think they do. But it's been a little shaky. All right. Garrett Cole is starting game one. He was great in game four of the ALDS. He was kind of shaky in game one of that series. He was kind of shaky in game two of the ALCS. He walked four guys. Uh, and, you know, Clay Holmes has started to see that wear and tear uh, get to him. Luke Weaver even had a couple bad outings, although Weaver in general has been fantastic. Uh, you know, Tim Hill has pitched basically every game, it feels like. I mean, at some point – oh, and Jake Cousins. Jake Cousins has also pitched, it feels like, every day. Uh, Carlos Rodon had a rocky outing against the Royals but bounced back, I think, against Cleveland. You know, I Clark Schmidt was kind of up and down against Cleveland. You know, it's – I feel like there are question marks with this this pitching staff. So – uh, that that's my that's my one concern. Also, uh, Aaron Judge needs to get it together. Uh, like you were saying, he has not been Aaron Judge necessarily. He's only five for thirty-one this postseason. He did it two homers in the last series, but you know if 
if Judge can get going, it's going to be hard to stop them. But right now, Judge isn't going. He's been mm-hmm. carried a lot by Soto and by Stan. So that's why I think maybe the Yankees won't win. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go next on this one then. Uh, I have two that I would like to use, and I'll go into both of them in a bit of detail. The Yankees will not win the World Series because their playoff path is about to be exposed. So looking at what they had on the way to the playoffs, I think I went to playoff. Uh, I went to uh, pick up baseball the other day, and someone was trying to tell me that the Yankees had the hardest trip to the World Series, and yeah, I'm like, they, 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 they you had legitimately me. the easiest trip of any team to the World Series after everything that happened. The fact of you didn't even have to go against the Astros because the Tigers did exactly what I said, and they whooped them. And which, which once again, yay. But at the same time, now it meant that every team that you faced there, you were better than and by a good bit. The Orioles is the only one, in my opinion, with a bit of a question mark there. But you have also played the Orioles so much that you know a lot of their weaknesses and could take advantage of them. Now you are playing against a team that, as you just said a moment ago, is able to put up runs like it's no one's business. They just hit the record without even needing that final game. This is a team with that if you give them an opportunity, they run with it. Give an inch, take a mile. And that goes into what my second reason why they're not going to win the World Series is, is that New York loves giving second chances. We've seen over the course of the entire playoff run for the Yankees, they have let these teams get back in these series. They have let teams get back into ball games here with just a one errant inning that, oh, now guess what? It's tie ball game again. I can't even begin to say how many times during the Cleveland series that they either had the lead and then lost it, or they just let the lead just keep getting chipped away, chipped away, chipped away until it was no more. Yes, they would still, they could still end up winning the game, but you still had those opportunities. Now let's take the Cleveland Guardians and replace them with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Who do you think scores more runs when you give them an opportunity to? The lineup that has Stephen Kwan, J, uh, J. Ram, and a few other people? Or the lineup that has Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Tommy Emmett, Kike Hernandez, all of these. It's going to be the fact that we've seen over the course of their easiest run to the World Series that we've ever seen that they've still struggled there in those bits, and the Dodgers are going to fully expose that. I'm going to go in a slightly different direction, but kind of keep backing off your point. Um, the Yankees won't win the World Series because they have some defensive issues. And really around the diamond, outside of Austin Wells, and Anthony Volpe, I have my concerns with their defense. Anthony Rizzo, former gold glover, but he's just coming back from injury. Labor Torres, not exactly the surest second baseman. Jazz Chisholm is playing a new position at third base. Juan Soto in right field. Gold glove finalist, apparently, but he's average at best. Uh, not athletic enough to make a lot of the plays that you'd expect Mookie Betts to make his contemporary over in right field for the Dodgers. Center field Aaron Judge really should be playing a corner. He's, it's admirable that he plays center field like he does, but he probably should play a corner. And then your left fielder, whether that's Verdugo, uh, Verdugo is okay. He, he's prone to some missed plays, but he's fine. So if it comes down to it and it's a game game seven situation and you got to get the double play, I trust the Dodgers to turn that double play. Um, the Yankees, maybe less so. So I think the infield defense, the outfield defense um, could be could be an issue. And in a series with as much star power as there is, and it could come down to you know a game of inches, that sort of deal, you got to make the plays. I trust the Dodgers a little bit more. And uh, to your point, Alex, about their path to the World Series, I mean, I've been, I mean, before the before the postseason began, I had the Mets and Padres facing each other in the pennant for the pennant. I mean, and I had a feeling that whoever won that series would win the World Series. The Dodgers have had to face the Padres and the Mets, who I thought, I mean, at least on the National League side, I thought those were the two best teams. So here we are. The Dodgers have beaten those two beasts 
I mean, they didn't even, they didn't have to face the Phillies, sure, but uh, the National League, I thought, had the more difficult path regardless of who you were, whereas in the American League, you got to face some teams that got to face the White Sox 13 times. Uh, and it's weird because Cleveland didn't do a meet. Like, they, they won their season series against the White Sox, but they didn't, like, completely annihilate them the way the Royals, the Tigers, and the Twins did. Uh, I mean, they still would have been above 500 without the, the White Sox season series. But, uh, yeah, so the, the Yankees definitely uh, have some holes on their roster. And, I mean, so did the Dodgers. And, uh, Splash, I'll go to you first here. I mean, the Dodgers, I feel like I, I've been doubting them, like I said earlier. So you tell me why the Dodgers won't win the World Series. Well, my friends, the Dodgers will not win the World Series because – they will be lining up bullpen games in the World Series. Now, I do have a yep. caveat that in the last 40 years, there have been three games started, uh, starting three games in which the starting pitcher did not get out of the first inning. Teams, ironically enough, are two and one. The Padres in 84 did it twice, but they won, they won one, they lost one. And then Dylan Lee, world famous World Series starter. Oh, yeah, of course. The Braves got the win in that game. So, listen, I, bullpen games during the regular season, fine. You play double headers, you play, you know, a week straight, but it's the playoffs. You are the Dodgers. Why are you starting TBD in World Series games? And this is a larger starting pitching issue. Jack Flaherty, do you trust Jack Flaherty in a World Series game? I don't know. He had a blow up start. He was much better in one. Uh, he had one bad start, one like much better start. He but, was great like, in the first game of the NLCS. Okay, he was yes. awful in game five, although he claims I, he was under the weather in game five. So I trust uh, Jack Flaherty the same as the answer of who the starter will be for those games. TBD. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. And then you have Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who. I still have my concerns if he can throw a full like a full workload. He missed a lot of the second half of the season. He's in if you want to compare it to like spring training ramp up. He's probably nearing the end of like that spring training ramp up period, first part of the regular season. So think about when he was in Japan uh, South Korea at the start of the season that didn't go too well, but I, I have my starting pitching concerns and you're starting a bull you have a bullpen game probably in game 3. And yes, the Dodgers have a really, really good bullpen. But when you use, you have these bullpen games, you're rolling the dice every time you bring another arm in. Sometimes they just don't have it as good as they are. Emmanuel Classe for Cleveland allowed five earned runs the entire regular season, allowed what felt like 50 home runs in the playoffs, just in one series, it felt like. He allows the all sorts. And he's the best reliever in baseball. Hunter Gaddis, top 10 reliever in baseball, allows the big home run. Sometimes you just don't have it. And the Dodgers, when you employ these bullpen games, all it takes is one guy not to have it. You put up a four spot and you lose. Yeah, and it's it's honestly really tough to watch with some of these. Because, yeah, like again, we know this better than anyone at this point, that playoff baseball is weird. It, it, playoff baseball, everything you know goes out the door, it feels like. Because regular season and playoff baseball is so wildly different. Not just in how it's played, but how it affects the players, too. We see some players that truly shine, Kike Hernandez, and some players that fall down from what they look to be. Aaron Judge has not done well, I'm not saying bad. Again, just not at what we're used to seeing from him. So I'll answer the question here then of why the Dodgers won't win the World Series. Uh, because we've seen the script before. Right now, we have seen what has happened with the Dodgers in the World Series many times while under the tutelage of one Mr. Dave Roberts. And we've seen the only time that Dave Roberts has led the team in a World Series to a victory was in 2020. And mind you as well, that series legitimately, if you don't pull Blake Snell when he is like when he was pulled, I still think there's a decent chance the Rays win that game and win the World Series. But he, again, that's just revisionist history. So taking a look at this right now, again, against the, I know that those games were against the Astros. I understand. 
but you still have to get it done. And we have seen this happen before. We have seen it. If you continue on, this is, in my personal opinion here, right? This is the big challenge here for Roberts, right? If you do not get this done with the lineup that you have, there's no excuses. There is absolutely no excuse why you should not win this. I understand the Yankees are really good. Yes, I understand that. But your one through nine, better than the Yankees. Your pitching staff, arguably better than the Yankees. Your entire team, top to bottom, arguably better than the Yankees. At this point, you just have to rely on what you have and win it from there. But we've seen what happens to them in the World Series. They've gotten the job done once under Dave Roberts. Yeah. And I mean, they, yeah, to your point, I mean, they, they won during the pandemic season, but they did lose two years in a row uh, in 2017 and 2018. Uh, but I, I mean, I have to piggyback off Splash's point. I think the Dodgers don't win the World Series because that they their bullpen has to wear off, uh, wear out at some point. And I mean, throwing multiple bullpen games in a seven game series, I think, isn't necessarily a a, a pathway to success uh, in the playoffs, at least, especially in the World Series. I will say this: that from an offensive standpoint, I think bullpen games can be incredibly difficult uh, because you are facing a new arm every inning, basically, or every other inning. So you don't get a lot of time to adjust to your to, to facing these guys. So I think that, you know, that could play to their advantage. But the fact that they've been doing it so often, this these playoffs, they're both in, just like the Yankees has been heavily taxed, but the Yankees actually have pitchers who can go deep into games. So – the Dodgers, I think, are playing a very risky game here by routinely running out bullpen games. The Yankees haven't had to do that. Occasionally, yeah. they'll run Luis Heel out there for a few innings only, or maybe Clark Schmidt only goes a few innings, but they don't have to do it so often to the point where their bullpen is pitching, you know, seven, eight, nine innings every game. Uh, so I think the Dodgers' bullpen is fantastic, but. At some point, they're going to hit a wall, and there's a chance it happens at the worst possible time. Yeah, and you, you saw it with Cleveland that they're like they weren't even using bullpen games really, but they were using Classe and Gaddis and Kate Smith, and they're just spamming them, using them every single night. And eventually, sometimes you roll snake eyes, and sometimes you allow two or three runs, and that can be the difference. Heck. Yankees fans will remember Mariano Rivera once had a blow up outing in the World Series. You know, it happens. Yeah. Not often. But no, the, not it, often at all. Like like we were just talking like I just said just a moment ago, right? That playoff baseball is a completely different animal than regular season baseball. The World Series is different than any other game of the regular season of the playoffs. The lights are the brightest, and you know that you are this close. Are you going to step up to the occasion, or are you going to strike out again? Yeah, exactly. So I, I the Dodgers, this try number four for Dave Roberts. This is his first, or this is his third chance in a full season to get a ring. Is this third times the charm? Maybe you get a legitimate ring now. Or are we going to see what we saw in 2017 and 2018? So, anyways, let's get to our predictions. Who's going to win? Who's going to win Series MVP? Alex, why don't you start us off here? Who do you have winning it all? And who do you have winning World Series MVP? I have for this, and you know, so I just reached over and grabbed something. Uh, I have the Dodgers winning all this because I think they are just the better team. I think that they are they are going to capitalize on the mistakes that the Yankees have. And it's just not going to be fair at that point. This is going to be a five-game series. Five games. And the winner, the MVP, one Mr. Shohei Otani. Wow. Yes, this is in his Angels card. I understand, but this is right next to me, and I wanted to make a point. Okay, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, fellas, 
Unfortunately, I have the uh, Evil Empire Dodgers, unlike the Evil Empire Yankees. I have the Dodgers in six, and your World Series MVP, I think Will Smith, breaks out of a slump, oh, hits a wow. couple home runs, drives in a bunch of runs, and is a key cog in the first full season Dodgers World Series since 1988. Dodgers so, in six, Will Smith, MVP. So I guess that makes it a clean sweep from our crew because I also have the Dodgers winning. Yeah. Uh, I have them winning in six as well. Uh, I, it'll be the fifth straight year that someone named Will Smith will win a World Series ring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> will, will Smith, the catcher in 2020. Will Smith, the reliever in 21, 22, and 23. And then Will Smith, the catcher again. But my World Series MVP, I think, is going to be Mookie Betts. The reason why, like I, I said, <laughs> during the NLCS, there were a lot of times where it felt like Shohei Otani was just being pitched around, and Mookie Betts, who was ice cold for most of the NLDS, just raked after Otani was put on base. So I think this is going to be Mookie's series. He's going to be batting second behind Otani, and he's just going to be racking up the hits and the RBIs and the extra base hits. So I have to go with Mookie uh, winning. Uh, Mookie winning MVP. Dodgers in six. Dodgers, like I said earlier, I've been wrong. I've been wrong about them basically all year and all postseason. feels like I knew they would get to the playoffs. I did not expect to see them in the World Series because it feels like every year they crash and burn before the World Series. But here they are after two straight exits in the NLDS and an exit in the NLCS. Here we are. The Dodgers will win the World Series this year. There. Uh, I hope everyone uh, – I hope Dodgers fans are happy finally. Uh, but <laughs> let us know uh, – let us know what you think will happen at LAR underscore baseball on Twitter. Uh, maybe you disagree with us. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this. I think this is going to be a crazy series. Uh, you have a whole bunch of superstars on each side. Uh, it feels like we're getting Evil Empire versus Evil Empire. Uh, so, there also. I mean, it is one seed versus one seed. <laughs> It is one seed versus one this seed. This is exactly what the MLB wanted, to have Aaron Judge versus Shohei Otani. Yeah, Aaron Judge and Juan Soto versus Shohei Otani. Uh, this is a crazy matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely look, looking, you know, on, on one hand, it's like it's the two teams that 90% of baseball fans hate. But at the same time, you can't deny that this is going to be entertaining. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, I, one like, thing oh I do want to say. I'm not watching it. anything, but yeah. There's one thing I do want to say before we move on to the next segment here. Um, I just found out how popular Otani truly is. This is going to sound like, what are you talking about, right? But do either of you guys watch anime at all? A little bit. A little no, bit? No, okay. can't say that okay. I do, pal. My brother Have you ever heard of the anime One Piece? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. One Piece, yeah. yeah. One of the most recognizable shows of all time. In Japan, they are <laughs> – I wish I was kidding at this. They are postponing the start of the newest season of One Piece because of the World Series because they want – they got the rights to show the Dodgers games and Otani yep. specifically. Hmm. So they are postponing the, the show of one <laughs> – excuse me, one of the most popular recognizable shows in the history of television and manga – because Shohei Otani's in the World Series. I think yeah. that is the... He's reaching dangerous levels of popularity, and I think it's and hilarious. It, it goes beyond just Otani, too. I mean, they have Yamamoto. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. Don't, I, Roberts. I, Don't forget about Dave Roberts. Don't forget about Dave Roberts. I will forget about... I, trust me, I want to forget about Dave Roberts, but I can't. <laughs> oh. Dave Roberts, born in Okinawa. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, so, also, uh, RG3 I mean, was born in Japan, by the way. Yes, he oh, yeah, was. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, like... The, I mean, everyone, like, all of my, like, my mom's friends in Japan, like, they're all watching the World Series. It's They're all watching yes. the playoffs right now. I mean, basically, if you wake up in the morning in Japan right now, chances are baseball is on TV showing the Dodgers. Uh, I mean, that's, what, what, it, that's what it was. That's what it was for me over the summer. Uh, baseball, like, Major League Baseball somehow was always on television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, is that is, is it is Japan the reason why we have like those Otani three batters up memes every t as a, every Honestly, ten seconds? It might be. You never know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I would be surprised. And here's the thing: I get it. It's just funny at this point. Yeah, it is. And also worth worth noting that uh, the 
Otani and Yamamoto are looking to become the not first non Red Sox or Yankees Japanese players to get a ring. Uh, the only true. Japanese, yeah. I mean, there there have only been a few Japanese players, and they've all been on the Red Sox or Yankees. So, including Dave uh, Roberts, including Dave Roberts, exactly. <laughs> including Dave Roberts. So, anyways, uh, we are going to these conversations. <laughs> yes. So anyways, uh, like I said earlier, let us know at lar underscore baseball what you think will happen in the World Series. But now it's time to get to everyone's favorite segment, and it's trivia. And I am hosting it this time around. And we've done a similar type of segment before, but this time we're doing it with World Series MVPs. It's called Name mm-hmm. That World Series MVP. Oh, I'm, no. I tried to go with some <laughs> relatively recognizable guys. Um, I'm basically going to read out some facts about various guys who've won the World Series MVP. We're going to do it Price is Right style or Family Feud style, I mean, where you buzz in once you think you've got it. At some point in the process, I will give you the year. Uh, sometimes I won't give it to you right at the start because you might get it right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's get started. Any questions? Here? How right, can I concede? <laughs> uh, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Our first player won the World Series MVP in 1995. He had oh, Tom Glavin. Blood... Yeah, there you go. Wow. That was way too easy. Uh, Remember when I said, how can I concede? Uh, I don't feel like <laughs> I have a shot. Uh... <laughs> Splash is on the board here early. I realized as soon as I said that, that it was a Braves year. Uh, yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, he no. Two earned runs in 14 innings, 305 career wins. He also threw 218 innings in his postseason career. Uh, so he was a workhorse. It helps when your team is in the playoffs almost every year. True. Uh, and also Kyle, a Mets legend, obligatory Mets legend. Uh, yeah, for better or for worse. Um, <laughs> anyway, Sorry, let's move on to the next player. Uh, he was the controversial runner-up for the Rookie of the Year Award in 2003, uh, losing out for some reason. Uh, the voters were weird that year. The, the year he won the World Series, he went 8 for 13 with three homers and eight RBIs. He had a career 933 OPS in the postseason. But after the season, he signed with the Angels. A one-year deal. He walked away. Uh, and he – yep, Splash. Um, Jeez. I fumbled it. No. Do uh, I keep going? Or does Alex have a guess? Or I, I have a guess. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm probably wrong on this, but is this uh, Vladimir Guerrero Sr.? Vladimir Guerrero Sr. never played in the World Series. So, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Should I keep reading? Yeah, you keep said going. 2003 yeah. runner-up to the side. He was 2003 the, runner-up, but he he was the – he's still the only Japanese-born player to win the World Series MVP. It happened in 2000. Oh, Hideki Matsui. Oh, Splash had it. Hideki Matsui. I thought we had a ding in. in. I thought we had a ding okay. in. My bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, um, you're fine. I was thinking Dontrell Willis. It's like, no, Beckett won the MVP. No, you said so Japanese, and I'm like, okay, yep. <laughs> what I was referring to is that in 03, he should have won rookie of the year, but the writers gave it to Angel Baroa because they thought Matsui's Japanese experience made him not as much of a rookie. So he lost out to Angel Baroa, uh, Mets legend, by the way. Okay, I will uh, say we did. We had this conversation with Yamamoto. Uh, would have yeah. had if he had played a full season. Now it's like Skeens versus Merrill, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, okay. Splash is on the board with two so far. So let's move on. This next guy was a third baseman who clubbed 320 home runs in his career, hitting as many as 47 in a season. He hit seven home runs in the 2002 postseason, including three in the World Series. Uh, Splash, yes. Uh, Braves legend Troy Gloss. That's correct. Troy Gloss. Wow. Wow. 3 0 lead. I'm, I'm about to get swept here, aren't I? <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. You still have a chance. I uh, really hope on. so. <laughs> let's move on to number four. Yes, Troy Gloss, who hit the back breaking two run double off Rob Ned. Which, by the way, that was the last game Rob Ned ever pitched in Oof. game six of the World Series. That was wow. a game I'm sure all Giants fans would like to forget. But let's move on. The next. Player won the World Series MVP for the Giants. The final batter of multiple World Series. In the World Series, he won MVP, which, by the way, was in 2010. 
Seven for 17. No! Uh, I think Alex had it there. Uh, is that Sergio Romo? No, it is not Sergio Romo. Uh, this player went 7 for 17. Hey, hello? Yes. Uh, yeah. It is Renteria, comma, Edgar. Yes, another former Brave, Edgar yes. Renteria. Former Tiger, uh, former, uh, former Cardinal, too. Former Red Sox. Former Cardinal, former Red Sox. So, yes, he was the last batter of the 97 series to walk off single. Last batter I thought when you said last batter, uh, when you said last batter, I thought you meant like they got the last out. Oh, um, man. You know, like, oh. Uh, no, that is that's not what I meant. Uh, Edgar no Ensuria hit the, the go ahead three run homer off Cliff Lee in the seventh inning of game five. Uh, that basically won the Giants the World Series. Uh, it feels like uh, people almost forget about uh, Edgar Renteria being the World Series MVP for the Giants. Yeah, I just uh, did. Because Thank you. <laughs> he, he Again, another case where he wasn't on the team the following year. Mm -hmm. uh, Edgar Renteria signed with the Reds and then was out of baseball because he retired. Maybe so like Splash is dominating right now. Let's see if you don't say. can get on the board. Can you pull a 2002 <laughs> Angels? No. <laughs> okay, great. Right, let's see. <laughs> just, Confidence just is through the floor yeah, right now. Yeah. There yeah, go. it's, it's going going places. All right, next player played in three World Series and won rings in consecutive years with different teams. Uh, in the World Series, he won MVP. He went 10 for 28 and drove in the go-ahead run in Game 7 with a double. He's a three-time All-Star who recorded as many as 8.6 baseball reference war in 2009. Uh, he hit his... He hit his go-ahead double in extra innings. Yes, Splash. Wow, Splash is on top of this. Uh, this would be Devil Rays legend Ben Zobrist. It is Ben Zobrist. <laughs> Man, Splash is cleaning up over here. You don't say! <laughs> uh, Joe Nathan's favorite player, by the way. Yeah. Uh, they were. Oh, Joe Nathan, by the way, was on that 2016 Cubs for, team for about uh, a week. Uh Yes, he technically got a World Series ring for them. All right, let's move on. Uh, this next player won it, won World Series MVP in 2004. He went 7 for 17 with a home run and four RBIs. The 12-time All-Star. Yes, Splash. Uh, this would be White Sox legend Manny Ramirez. That's correct. It is Manny Ramirez. Uh, the all-time leader in playoff home runs with 29 in 111 games. Um, that record is getting kind of kind of in jeopardy, I would say. Uh, well, if couple, the Astros figure out how to win a playoff series, that would help out a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, Altuve is getting close. Springer's up there, I know. There are a few guys who are like getting close there. If uh, you want to know, the, if you want to know a little bit more about the top. Uh, home run hitters in the postseason. Go watch last week's podcast. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, By the anyways, way, uh, Matt, I just yeah. need you to know something here real quick. Uh, I think it is absolutely cruel that you do a World Series trivia to the guy that has never seen his team in a World Series. Of course, exactly. <laughs> Not just Ooh. winning a World Series, never even sniffed it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, All right. Um, I say we finish these out anyway. Uh, there <laughs> yeah, let's let, yeah, let's just let right. let's just let the uh, the I, I of Alex. knowledge from Splash come on out. Let's do it. I want to okay. see if Alex can get on the board. Uh, I will okay. try. All right. So this next guy, um, he saved all four of his team's victories in the 1996 World Series. 330 career saves. And Splash is on top of this again. Uh, this would be John Wetland. That's correct. John Wetland, who then signed a four-year deal with the Rangers and was succeeded by his setup man, who had a breakout star in 90, a break a breakout season in 96, Mariano Rivera. I don't know if he had ever, ever turned into anything, but uh, he had a pretty good career, I guess. Future um, podcast mentioned, by the way. Because we yes. mentioned him earlier on this episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or I mentioned him. Uh, but anyways... We're down to two. Let's see if we, I'm waiting for the clean sweep. Last, All right, let's see it, bud. <laughs> last, two, last two chances for Alex to get on the board and avoid a shutout. Uh, this next player was a four-time All-Star, and he won NLCS MVP the same year he won World Series MVP. He had a 2.77 ERA in 13 innings that year. 
Let's see what Splash has. Oh, that was probably bad. Uh, okay. Oh, great. Great start. Yeah, great start. Um, well, it's not who I was thinking of when you said that. Uh, I, Madison Bumgarner, I, I guess. It is not Madison Bumgarner. Alex, do you okay, want to guess to... now or do you want? Not a uh, chance. I have no idea. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, – here, here are the, a couple of hints that will probably give it away and splash me get to it immediately. Uh, they played in the World Series the following year, and most famously, probably for this guy, he threw a no-hitter and then was traded a couple days later. He threw a no-hitter for his, his team, and then a couple days later it was traded to the Texas Rangers uh, because his team was out of the race. Yes, Alex. Oh. Effectively. Oh, you were so close. Uh, it's You're Hamels. on the right path. <clears throat> it's Flash, Braves legend Cole Hamels. Mm. It is Cole Hamels. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Oh, God. Right. Okay, I will point Come out, on. Bumgarner was an LCS MVP. His ERA was just higher. Yes, he was. Yeah. Um, he, might but, be a, uh, he was like a, a round of four-time All-Star, too. But Okay, I'll take the LNL I think he was, yes. Something like that. Anyways, the last player in the World Series... He went four for 12 with three homers and eight RBIs. All of his hits and homers came in the last two games of the series. Seven of his eight RBIs were in those games, and he's one of two players to play for all five AL East teams. He retired after the 2019 season, though. Hmm. I will admit, I think this – I thought – well, I thought Wetland was going to be the hardest one. But uh, – Oh, Wetland we'll came with the year. Story. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Oh, oh! You said 2019 was his last year. 2019 was his last season. But yes. Is it Howie Kendrick? No, it is not Howie Kendrick. I should have prefaced this. He won it the year before that. Oh, Steve Pierce. Yeah, Steve Pierce. <laughs> I did not realize so, he played with the other teams in the AL East. I knew he played for Baltimore and Boston. But yeah, okay. so the uh, the only other player to do so is Kelly Johnson. Kelly right? Johnson. Yeah, um, Mets yeah. legend. Mets Mets and Braves legend multiple yeah. times. Yeah, traded. Um, I believe traded between them multiple times. Yeah, two years in a row. <laughs> Less than a year apart. Uh, I remember the Mets guy Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe. 2015 deadline, and then in the middle of the 2016 season, the Braves had Kelly Johnson and traded him to the Mets again. Um, so, did you be like that? Splash with a dominant nine nothing victory today. Um, <laughs> I only have I only have one thing to say about my performance. Yep. Just got to try harder not to suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, I, I mean, think I, fun with our soundboard. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, uh, you know, like I was saying about Steve Pierce, though, he did basically nothing for the first three games of that series. And then starting in the eighth inning of game four was Barry Bonds. Uh, game time. <laughs> he did nothing, but he started hitting. Dingers! Dingers! There we go. Exactly. Just dingers. Dingers. Dangers. Dangers. Dangers! Uh, <laughs> okay. That, that, was, that was Steve Pierce. Uh, anyways, congrats, uh, thank Flash. You Good job, man. Flash, thank you, that sir. was GG boys. GG. Um, wow, that was. I didn't even uh, have a. Uh, I didn't even have a blues clue when most of the time when you were already buzzing in. I'm like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> that, that that was really impressive. Uh, you know, I know normally we do this with all stars, but we uh. Did it, yeah, because Mariners have actually had an All Star. <laughs> yeah, we we did this time around with World Series MVPs. Uh, it's funny because when I put it together, I hadn't even thought about the fact that the Mariners hadn't been there. So, Oof. Uh, and the one team that hasn't, of course. Uh, anyway, that will change. Uh, twenty twenty five is the year, boys. Uh, we got right, the Braves Mariners Cancun series, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, yeah, as say, you could celebrate the Cancun series. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways. Uh, we are going to end the show the way we end every show, which was with uh, oh, wow, which is with the moment to our ourse- moment to ourselves. Uh, you know, sixty seconds, give or take a few, to talk about whatever the heck is on our mind. It does not have to be baseball related. So, 
Uh, Splash raised his hand first, so he will go first. Uh, let me just get my stopwatch real quick. All right, your time starts in three, two, one, go. Okay. Um, the rest in peace, Fernando Valenzuela. There are few phenomenons, phenomena, whatever. There are a few whirlwinds that have hit Major League Baseball like Fernando Mania did in 1981. Won the National League Cy Young, won the National League Rookie of the Year, the only player in the history of the sport to win both in the same season. Just a spectacular um, player, a spectacular man. He still or had still been connected with the Dodgers even until even into even into 2024. He got his jersey retired, the iconic 34, and just a, a horrible loss for baseball, a horrible loss for the Dodgers, a horrible loss for the. Um, Latin community, and he will be missed. His presence will be missed. Um, and I, I hope we have uh, there's a, <clears throat> a touching tribute Friday before game one because he, the Dodgers lost an icon. You know, he might not be the very best pitcher the Dodgers ever had, but it is hard to be more iconic than Fernando Mania, as good as Clayton Kershaw is, as good as Sandy Koufax was, as good as. Drysdale or Newcomb or Eric Gagne that one year he won the Cy Young, like Fernando Mania, man, that that's a, a phenomenon that transcended sports and the big reason why a lot of <clears throat> big reason why a lot of Dodger fans are Dodger fans is, is because of Mr. Valenzuela. So rest in peace. Yeah, and I, I was shocked hearing it. I was um, too, like you're yeah. saying, he was involved with the organization up until up until his final days. Um, and I, I am really glad, though, that he did get to see his number retired because it felt like he was mm-hmm. sort of unofficially retired for a while. But, yeah, that Fernando Mania was a, a, a crazy, yeah. crazy time. I mean, he took the league by storm. He won Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, World Series, all in the same year. He was Major League Player of the Year as a rookie. I mean, he accomplished a lot, a, a lot all before turning 25. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was Eventually through a no-hitter. Um, yeah, you know, hitter. The uh, iconic delivery, you know, the eyes up at the the bill yeah, of the hat. Through a screw, a really good screwball. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the delivery is one that I'm sure a lot of people iconic. grew up mm-hmm. I- imitating because, I mean, yeah, Legend. seriously. Uh, yeah, he threw as many as 20 complete games in the season too. I mean, he was, yeah. Um, all right, Alex, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure, I'll go next. All right, your time starts in three, two, one, go. Yeah, so for mine, I want to give a shout out here to games that are a little that are a lot more in depth than people think they are. Two of the games I've been playing a lot lately are Super Mario Party Jamboree and WWE 2K24 My GM Mode. And I was explaining like why I've been playing these games so much and why I play a lot of them to people, and they're like, "Dang, I had no idea these were that in depth." Because it's a wrestling game. Why would it be so in-depth here? Or it's a party game. Why would it be so in-depth? It makes it a lot better. I'll tell you that much. But no, like I've been playing 2K24 with my GM and everything that goes into it from the strategy, from being able to micromanage your roster, being able to manage your, your money, your resources, your power cards. Then in Mario Party, being able to try to play not just the game itself, but to play for the uh, bonus stars at the end, being able to play for everything. And it it can you can yeah you can play to just win the mini games, but I just played a game against normal CPUs and lost, even though I won every single mini game. So bonus stars, fun times, very in depth. I love those kinds of games. Yeah, man, I, uh, I, I wish I could play Mario Party right now. <laughs> I hear it's uh, I, I hear it's a fun time. I, I played the last one a lot because uh, mm-hmm. it was uh, yeah. oh, a couple people that I lived with had it. It was pretty fun to pr- pretty fun to play. I, I actually enjoyed I, Mario Party a lot. I love playing Mario Party. There's very few people I can play Mario Party with because I get very competitive in Mario. Party. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, I play. I, mean, I feel like but, that's the way. You know, Super I Smash play Bros, to Mario win Party. the game. <laughs> exactly, you play to win the game. Uh, all right, uh, can one of you count me down now? Yeah, I got you, man. All right, your time begins in three, two, one, go. 
Uh, so I just want to give one last shout out to the 2024 Mets. Uh, this year was a roller coaster. Uh, I saw them in spring training. I saw them get one hit on opening day. Uh, I saw them retire Daryl Strawberry's number. That was also the day they were 10 games under 500. Uh, if you had told me at that point that you were, I was going to be going to a playoff game later that year, I assumed the Mets would not be playing in it. Uh, the fact that they made it to as far as they did, uh, it's insane. Uh, I'll never forget the various characters we had this year, whether it was Grimace or Candelita, you know, hearing OMG. Uh, you know, it was it was just crazy. Uh, Glizzy Iggy, shout out to Glizzy Iggy. Uh, shout out to the rally pimp, Max Wiener. Uh, Seymour Wiener, who was the veteran of the game on the first day of the season. I remember he, doing a double take hearing that. Uh, Dollar Dog Night was awesome. Uh, and, you know, I just I think this team really came together. I'm really, really excited to see what's in store for the next season. But uh, really, I know that uh, the Mets or every team posts the thank you fans graphic. But really, I think we should all be thankful for the team this year. It was really, really a fun summer. And, I mean, the, like I said earlier, the fact they made it to the NLCS, uh, I think the season was a success. The only thing I would have made it better was winning a World Series. So uh, hats off to them. And I'm uh, really excited to see what David Stearns and company has in store this offseason. I cannot wait to be back at City Field uh, in six months or so. Yeah, this was truly a miracle season for the Mets, and I had fun watching it along with y'all. Uh, just the fact that it felt like it very much felt like an anime at some point because you had all these different characters coming in and you started out about as yeah, low exactly. as you possibly could. It felt like a storybook the entire way through. And it feels like every like mo most of the hype videos I saw were it began with Gary Cohen saying, you know, zero and five, nobody in the stadium, no hits through eight through seven innings. It feels like rock bottom, and it did feel like rock bottom. The thing is that it feels it felt like they hit rock bottom like multiple times and so like it, it was getting to the point where after like every loss it was like, like it, every loss where like the bullpen blew the game it was like is this rock bottom no is it is this rock bottom is this the worst loss of the year is this the worst loss of the year it kept like getting lower and lower and somehow they dug themselves out of it uh it's crazy they were 11 games under 500 they finished 89 73 and then made the nlcs so uh, it's definitely one for the record books. Uh, I, I probably will look back on this season more fondly than 2022. Uh, I know 2022, they won 101 games, but this year, I mean, they defied expectations in basically every way, shape, and form. So, And they've uh, now tied with the Braves twice in three years, which has to be yeah, mathematically kind of like insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually hadn't even thought about that. Um, I know the Braves have won the season series, I think, each of the last seven years now. Uh, but it's getting closer. Uh, <laughs> let's just put it that way. Because I believe the Braves went 10-3 and three against them last year, which is kind of embarrassing. I'm uh, not going to yeah. lie. Uh, but anyways, uh, that will do it for us today. Uh, like I said, the World Series is coming up, so... Make sure to tell us what you think will happen. Hit us up at LER underscore baseball on Twitter uh, and Instagram. We do have an Instagram if you wouldn't believe it. Uh, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit that like button. Also, make sure to leave us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to us. Make sure to follow all of us on Twitter. Follow Alex at the Sports Guy 242 Follow the Splash at Mr. Splashman19. Follow myself at Matthias underscore A underscore K. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be road tripping next week, so these two gentlemen will take you through the next week. So this may be the last time you hear from me this baseball season. But anyways, from everyone in LAR, thank you all for listening. Stay safe, and I hope to see you all real soon. Take care.